think there's a ton of raw ability in these kids. This has really become a hotbed for Sudanese talent, you know, and it's really great to see. Well, my dream is to play Division One college basketball and hopefully play um, professional basketball. Well, I play basketball because I, I love basketball. <laughs> a lot of kids, really what they want to, to hear and see is just people believe in them and, and give them time and, and just, you know, uh, let them know that they could, by hard work, they could get to the same position that I'm in. We are new arrival here in this country. We are struggling too much. A lot of little kids here come with their, with their moms only. Their dad, either they have been killed in the war and their mom just escaped with them. Other have been separated from their dad. But my aim is, is very simple. Uh, is to give kids something to do with the discipline. Because I see sport can take you anywhere. And I really believe in you guys, and I believe that I might be the only South Sudanese in the NBA right now, but I really believe there's going to be so many. There's going to be so many. Here in Australia and America, it's like basketball it just takes them away from like all the bad things that happens around and uh, keep them focused with school and basketball. You can see here kids are walking around and they they don't have anybody helping them. They're just walking by themselves. And there are possibilities this kid could fall in the wrong hand. Once you encourage a child or, or anybody to do something, and they say, no, no, I can't, no, no. But you keep pushing them and say, yeah, you can. And they discover that they like it. The possibilities are limitless. Helping Hoops is a charity. And we use basketball as a platform for kids to make their way. A lot of kids, they're not really striving for anything. But once they see somebody that they can relate to make it, how come I can't do the same? Now you have this enthusiasm, this, this desire to go and burn and do more. I mean, this is where we all started up, you know, this court here. You know, I've been living here for a while, you know, so um, I remember when we were a kid, you know, playing two and two, you know, pick up and stuff. I was born in Sudan. Uh, we traveled to Egypt due to the war back home, civil conflicts. I came to Australia in 2003 with my family. It was difficult adjusting to a new environment. I mean, we didn't speak no English. I mean, my whole family didn't speak English. But, I mean, it was all right because we had a few Sudanese communities here that helped out. When I was in high school, you know, playing here and playing for Waverly, I've been recruited by a couple of universities. So they usually come here and scout. They decided I should go over there and visit and stuff. And it worked out good. I've been there since. It's been three years so far. The Sudanese are blessed with, you know, the dimensions that are ideal for basketball. They, they generally can adjust to, you know, different circumstances and culture changes. And a lot of them have the skill package that goes along with it. But most of the guys that come in and they're looking, you know, pretty much to play in American college basketball. I mean, that's our primary pathway. You know, guys like Ding Santo and Ding Adele and, um, Kawani, Kawani, you know, the list sort of goes on as far as the players that have come through here. It's something that, as I said, is more of a tribute to them doing what we've asked them to do, uh, which is the reason why they are where they are right now. These guys that have, uh, you know, have gone on to college, uh, you know, they become role models for the young guys, and it really, really in inspires them. And as coaches, we've seen, we've seen that. Kids come up to the club and they sign up. Because people really look up to what we're doing because um, we got to set a good example for like all the kids. I think I'm a role model because I hear like kids from my area always saying, oh, I want to be like him when I get older. Luol asked me to come here to run a clinic. Uh, he takes an interest in a lot of the Sudanese communities around the world and using basketball to reach the kids in those communities. And a lot of them look up to me and, um, you know, when I'm here, a lot of them believe that, you know, they, they could also be in the same position that I'm in by working hard. To have Luol Deng or someone playing in the NBA, knowing we've, we're coming from a torn and tough place, it inspires us to play basketball and inspires us just to be a bigger person, you know. Life is all about modeling and, and he can be such a tremendous role model to so many people, but certainly to the kids from southern Sudanese communities all over the world. I think he can be an incredible role model of someone that overcame, someone that didn't use his horrific background as an excuse not to succeed, and in fact use it as fuel to succeed. 
Um, so I think his story really resonates with these kids and their families. It's no secret whether you're born here or you're not, where we're from needs a lot of help. I always felt like some way, somehow, I'm gonna make a change. So I've been where you guys are. It's either basketball or just be in the streets and hang out with friends or go out late night or just do a bunch of things that I could have done. And I have people believe in me just like you guys do. I met a lot of people that are more talented than me. I met a lot of people that had more advantage than me. But one thing that I had was I had a fight in me. I had to believe that I'm gonna, I'm gonna inspire somebody. You have a lot in you that could affect a lot of people and change a lot of lives. Inspire somebody and use that as a tool. It's my main focus, you know. I mean, just to, you know, to lead and do good so all the other Sydney's kids can see it as an example and follow my path. It means a lot to me to see um, young Australian kids make it to America. It shows that, like, even the big people, like the NBA players, like, care about the development of basketball overseas. When I see them on TV, I'm just like, whoa, these guys came from here. Like, I can do the same thing that they did. Now they know they can do the, they they can do the whatever they want. They could have a dream and and spend their time every day to have that dream.